It's Monday, the Monday show, not Tuesday. The Monday show, it's Monday, the Monday show, the Monday show. In the spirit of understudying being amazing, what's your favorite understudying line? You're fat. Give me my bones. That's it. <laughs> my boyfriend's going to kill me. <laughs> Whatever you say. <laughs> My favorite line is when they're talking about like of the striker or whatever, and Lily just goes, "Don't you think it's sad?" Oh, that's horrible! It's just a reaction to hearing about meeting a child. Big congratulations to Ricky for winning the striker Instagram contest. Um, it's unofficial though. What is your striker's favorite element of rice? Strawberries. Push, pull, hold, or release? Yes. No. <laughs> Tell me about the tactics Derelict Striker uses. Um, lots of gimme, gimme, and, uh, wow, rude. <laughs> Tell me about your process with Green Lady. And I'm not a predator, even though everyone thinks so, because five years ago I made a fart joke. <laughs> what is one piece of history that American woman Scriker has seen? <laughs> What's the name of the character you play in the show? Josie. <laughs> Why are you still going? <laughs> What's the address of Syracuse stage? Uh, your mom. Where is Scriker set? Uh, it's in the barrel that went over Niagara Falls. <laughs> Who originated child Scriker? Oh, no. uh, John Cena. <laughs> what time is the baby born? <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Hey, Monday show. So for this last Monday show, I'm gonna go a little bit away from the usual whimsical and comedic content about what it means to be a hero um, or a college student that's nerdy and crazy um, that I usually do and talk about a little, something a little bit more serious that I think um, is still on brand for that. Unless you've been living under a rock, I'm sure you're aware of the situation in the Middle East right now. And this is not a video trying to politically affiliate with anything that is happening. I'm just extremely saddened that there is loss of life and that it's gotten to the point where this is something that is so huge um, that is affecting so many people. Something that has saddened me as well is the discourse that I see online about this, particularly in apps like Instagram, is that there is sort of like this notion of a moral superiority of how much you're posting about something um, and that you shouldn't be posting about other things in your life or allowing yourself to not think about the crisis and stuff. And I totally understand. I mean, I, I do think that human beings, we should care about things that are happening outside of our own worlds and stuff. But I read this article um, about empathy fatigue and just how often we can read so much about something horrible happening outside of our lives that starts affecting who we are um, in our daily lives and things like that. And I don't think that that's productive whatsoever. I mean, if people are going through something, if you're not in a place where you can actually, you know, feel like you're, you're, you're helping and, and, and okay with your own life, um, there's not much you can do. Whenever I think of things that you can do to actually help, I mean, there's only really three things that the normal person with not a lot of political power can do. And yes, one of, one of them is outside of this is raising awareness. And I do believe that we still should do that. But I think that there are three things that we can do that are going to do a lot better of a, of a job. One, research. Research as much as you can on this issue. It is something that is historical. It's not just something that, that started even in the 40s or wherever it, it started in the 20th century. It's, it's ages and ages of, of history. Two, um, you can donate. Here are some of my favorite resources that I believe uh, are making an actual impact and that I trust and I've, I've loved, or you can you know do some research on yourself. Donate to humanitarian aid. There are so many people that have lost their homes, that have lost have been displaced, have lost loved ones, that have lost a lot of different things, particularly in Gaza, um, that I think deserve a lot of humanitarian help.
and three, call your representatives asking for a ceasefire. I believe that those are the three things that we can really do. One of the themes that I love about a lot of these heroic movies that I, I watch is this idea that we can't be everywhere all at once, we can't save everybody, but we can always try to do the best that we can. Um, so I implore people to believe that they can do the best that they can. There are crises going on everywhere in the world at every moment. Um, some that are not getting the same attention that this one is, and I'm not by any means criticizing the attention that this one is getting because that's important. But I do believe that if we spend our entire lives trying to fix everything in the world, we're just going to be sad shells of ourselves because it is a pretty messed up world sometimes, but I think that there is joy that we should still be able to explore and live in so that we can be in the right mentality to help when things like this happen. We can actually band together as a society and not alienate people just because of what they post on Instagram or what they don't post on Instagram. Thank you so much, and I really hope you consider supporting. Showing off my jewelry. The look for the day. Filming ended early due to Monday, the Monday show, not Tuesday, the Monday show, the Monday show. Hello, welcome, bienvenidos. What's welcome in German? Hello, willkommen. This is our last Monday show. As seniors, we're gonna depart, we're gonna go to NYC. But before we do that, we thought we'd get all cozy and tell you, you, about the highlights of our fall semester senior year. So let's start with August. What was your highlight for August? I think my highlight for August was settling into our new apartment and mm -hmm. making it look like a home. Yeah. Took us a while, but we made it we made it cozy. I think so too. Yeah. Um my highlights for August are weirdly both state fair related. Um mm -hmm. because we were only actually here for like the end of August. But at home I beat the record for the bowl writing. <laughs> um was really proud of that. That was my goal at the Arlington Fair. And then at the New York State Fair, we won a plush Remy the Rat from the claw machine. We really. did. Vic just really victorious moments, truly. Yeah, we beat the scam. Mm -hmm. We really beat the scam yeah. there. It was, it was thrilling. That was a good one. September. September. I think I have a few highlights for September, actually. Um, I started my internship at Syracuse Stage. I was a community engagement and outreach intern. Um, and it was very rewarding and wonderful. Um, it's not over yet because we're filming this in the beginning of December, so I still got like two more weeks. But yeah, it was a wonderful experience. Um, I also got my first tattoo, which was Little Ducks, because what else would it be? It's great. Yeah. And we started our last show at SU Drama, Ghost Ship, directed by Ricky Pack. I don't know if you ever heard of him, but I haven't. You probably wouldn't. It was a really fun show process though so beginning that was just really exciting um also a highlight for me was go shit but um i went to boston and i saw one of my favorite bands black country New road that was pretty cool and then another highlight for me was going to chili's on my 21st birthday mm -hmm. <laughs> that was fun it was fun that was fun <laughs> October really started out with a bang. The first day of October, Ricky Pack, our director of Ghost Ship, took us to the Syracuse University ropes course. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, that was yeah. an incredible day. It was terrifying and mm -hmm. exhilarating mm -hmm. and kind of painful, like wearing shoes on like those tiny little wires the size of pencils, yeah. but it was really rewarding. Yeah, we got attacked by squirrels, wasps, mm -hmm. the elements. Mm -hmm. It was, it was, but it was a sunny day and we was, no, oh, we were like 50 feet up in the air. It was great. Wonderful. Yeah. I have, I just had one more, which was going home to see my 
closest friend in her professional debut at Cinetic Theater. It was pretty epic. Mm -hmm. Shout out to October 14th when Stella and I created oh. the best Monday show to ever exist. Yeah. In all the history of Monday shows, this one has to take a cake. I think so. Um, go watch it if you haven't. No, Brandon. Well, my highlight was uh, performing Ghost Ship. Yeah, we opened um, the show. Yeah, we opened and closed it. Um, we had, I think, over 40 performances in total because we had yeah. a lot of tech performances where uh, audiences actually came. Um, yeah, it was like an incredible, crazy, rewarding experience. Something I never thought I would do or like mm -hmm. didn't think I could do physically, but we did it. Yeah. Um, and I added a new skill to my list of random skills of barrel walking. Um, <laughs> you so had to be fun. there. Yeah, you had, you had to be there. If you didn't see it, you missed out. Yeah. I think Go Ship challenged me physically and, and pushed me in, in a way I didn't think I could be pushed. Mm. Um, but it was so rewarding to build... And on, such an ensemble heavy piece mm -hmm. and put it on its feet. And I think we did so much work building a team and building uh, a community together that when we just had everything, when we had that first tech day where everything was in place, mm -hmm. it all just kind of made sense and slid together. Yeah, it was really, it was really like unique experience. And it felt like everything really like slid into place. Like there mm -hmm. was no element that was out of place. The designers, the management, the creative team, everything, like they were all so well meshed mm -hmm. yeah i think another highlight of november for me was getting to try out motion capture mm -hmm. in our performance in the media class um that's been uh i can't say lifelong dream because i didn't even know what that was until like four years ago but it was just so incredible to like put on a suit and well like sensors on my body and just be able to create a skeleton um, and we actually have um, animators up on the hill collaborate with us and they're going to put together characters and it's going to be so weird and meta and uncanny valley, but it's going to be great. Yeah. It was cool. Yeah, that was fun. Mm -hmm. And here we are. It's December 3rd. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas, everyone. Um, we have a fireplace on our TV. You can't see it. You can't see it. It's fine. It's keeping us warm. Um, I am very excited for... To, to finish our, our last semester here. Yeah. Do all of our little showcase prep. And then I'm going to go to Texas for Christmas and get to see my mom and my family. Yeah. I'm, I'm very excited also to go home for Christmas and see everybody and spend some time to not think and just kind of yes. exist yes. in the world. Um, I think I'm also excited in, in the future to actually – to go to New York and, and try try theater in a different way. Because I think this semester we were really involved in this whole immersive, physical, collaborative experience. And now we're being pushed into the hustle bustle New York City life, which is absolutely terrifying and scary and terrifying and scary. And I think I need to say terrifying again. And also scary. And also scary. But also kind of terrifying. But it's only three months. But we can do it, and I'm, I'm excited to give it a try. I'm excited to try it out. All right, well, yeah. Play the outro music. <laughs> Thank you, Ricky. It's Monday, the Monday show, not Tuesday. The Monday show, it's Monday. The Monday show, the Monday show.